Number 33. Complete and balance the equations of the following reactions, each of which could be used to remove hydrogen sulfide from natural gas. Okay. But in this case, we do have to complete and balance this equation where we have sodium carbonate, which is Na2CO3 aqueous, plus um, hydrogen sulfide, H2S gas, and we just have to find out what the products are. Okay, well, the first thing I see here is that we're dealing with two different compounds. I see that I have multiple elements for my Na2CO3. I have sodium, carbon, and oxygen. And the same thing for the H2S, I have hydrogen and sulfur. Now, whenever you see that you have two compounds, you know that this reaction is going to be a double replacement or a double displacement reaction. So two compounds, double replacement or double displacement. Now, whenever you're doing a double replacement or a double displacement reaction, the easiest way to go about this is to first find out the ions that exhibit in the first part of your uh, equation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write these out big. So we have Na2, CO3, aqueous, thank you for that, plus H2S, and that's a gas. All right, so whenever you're breaking down a compound, uh, there's only gonna be one split. So you have to figure out where that split is. Now. For this one, it's a little bit challenging because I have three different elements. Well, is the split going to go between the sodium and the CO, or is the split gonna be here with the sodium and the carbon on one side and the oxygen on the other? Well, this comes from knowing and picking out your polyatomic ions. I say to myself, well, wait a minute. I see this CO3. This is a pretty famous polyatomic ion and polyatomic ions always stick together. So I know that the break is gonna go between the sodium and the carbonate. All right, now also know that the three in the CO3 is part of the carbonate. You technically only have, if we put parentheses there, we only have one of the carbonates. So. Let's break this down. We have Na, so I'll put it over here, Na, the sodium, and then we got the CO3. Now, whenever you're breaking it down, just make sure that you also have the charges. We always wanna know what those ions are. The ions are the charged guys. And you can do this by either memorizing your polyatomics, knowing where these elements are on the periodic table, a little bit of both, but you could also crisscross. In this case, there was a two for telling me that there was two sodiums and there was only one carbonate. You can crisscross these values back up to get the charges. This two crisscrosses back up, telling me that the carbonate was a negative two charge. Negatives are always in the back. And this one crisscrossed up, telling me that the sodium was a plus one charge. So you could also see that Sodium is in group one, and group one ions are always a plus one. And carbonate is always a negative two charge, so that checks out. Okay, next we have our two ions here, so let's do the same for H2S. Now this one is a little bit easier because there's only two elements. So the break has to be between those two elements. And you have two hydrogens, and you have one sulfur, so use those subscripts at the bottom to crisscross them to find out the charges. So we have H and S. And notice how when I'm bringing these down, so for example, like sodium, I don't do anything with this two in terms of the sodium. All I wanna know are just what the ion was. Okay, so I have two hydrogens, I got one sodium. This two crisscrossed up telling me that the sulfur was a negative two charge. So cool on that. And this one crisscrossed up telling me that the hydrogen was a plus one. So plus one. Okay. Hardest part, probably done. Now, all we have to do is make the products. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to bring this over a little bit over here, just so that we have room. And there's a couple of ways that you could think about this, 
but we could think about it as the new positives go with the new negatives, or like I like to think of it as outers go with outers and inners go with inners. Now we have the four ions here, and the way that we do them is that there's clearly, if you think of this in terms of a box, right? You have ions that are on the outside of the box, right? And then you have ions that are on the inside of the box. So when you make your new, um, when you make your new products, the outers go with the outers and the inners go with the inners. So my new product, one of them is going to be the sodium is going to now combine with the sulfur. So let's write it out. I'm going to write it out on the top here, Na plus one combining with an S two minus or a minus two. Now, just like we use those subscripts to crisscross up to get the charges, you could take these charges and crisscross them down to get your compound. So this plus one crisscrosses down, telling me that I only needed one sulfur. When you do the crisscrossing, who cares about the positive and the negative? You're just looking for the number. This negative two crisscrosses down, telling me that I have now two of the sodiums. So we have Na, there's a two here, so I'm gonna write a two, and then comes the sulfur, and that was a one. You can write the one if you want, but you don't have to. And that is one of your products. So I'm gonna say plus. Let's now figure out the other product. And remember, the inners go with the inners. Now this one is a little bit tricky because when we do our new compounds, or if you've noticed, the positives always come first, then the negatives. So when I just have to rewrite this, I just have to make sure that I write the positive first and then the negative one. So we have H plus one coming together with the carbonate ion, CO3 two minus. And do the same exact thing. Take those charges and crisscross them down. So this plus one comes down here telling me that I only need one of the whole carbonate. And this two crisscrosses down telling me that I needed two hydrogens. So I have H2 and then I just have one CO3 so I could just write it as CO3. All right, now the next thing is maybe we can put some states to our products, right? They gave us states here, aqueous gas. Now we just have to figure out, well, what are the states for the Na2S and the H2CO3? Now, always go by your solubility rules. Now, one big solubility rule is your group ones. Now, if you have an element that's in group one, and for example, the sodium is in group one, if you have any group one ions, they will always be soluble. There are no exceptions. So whenever you see that you have group one ions, so Na, Li, K, they will always be aqueous. So right off the bat, I see a sodium, so I know that this is going to be Aq. Now for H2CO3, this is a very specific compound. This is carbonic acid. But the thing is, is that carbonic acid is pretty, um, I guess we'll say, uh, pretty volatile. And there is going to, what's going to happen is this compound is going to rearrange. So that's another thing that we have to worry about here. Now, whenever you see H2CO3, this will rearrange into CO2 and water. And if we just strip these away, there are the same amount of elements on the left as there are on the right. As we can see here, there is one carbon, and that goes to this carbon and CO2. There are two hydrogens, H2, and that goes to the hydrogen of the water. And now there's a total of three oxygens. Two plus one is three, and those are your three oxygens. So anytime that you see H2CO3, just box it off and say, eh, eh, this is always going to rearrange and I have to put it down as CO2 plus H2O. 
Now we just have to put the states on these compounds. Well, carbon dioxide is a gas at room temperature, and H2O, pure liquid, at room temp, so it gets the L. So CO2 will get the gas, and H2O will get the L. And I think we're good to go. So complete and balance, I'm just going to rewrite the, uh, the rest of it up here. So we have Na2CO3 aqueous plus H2S gas yields Na2S, and that's aqueous because uh, sodium is a group one, plus the CO2, that's a gas, and then plus the H2O, and that's a liquid. Let's see, does, does everything look balanced here? You can do the chart if you want, but I'm just going to kind of call it as I see it. I see that I have two sodiums, and I got two sodiums here, so that's all good. I have 1S, 1S, and then I just have the H2CO3, which is CO2 and H2O. So we're all balanced here. This is your final answer. So maybe I can just box that off. Whoa, what just happened there? Is this going to happen again? Let's try it again. I don't know what's going on. But maybe, maybe if I just do it like that, that's better. Okay. And there is the answer. All right. So what'd you think? I hope this helped you out. Please let me know in the comments if this helped you. I love talking to you guys. Thank you so much for being part of the community and for choosing the channel to help you out with your chemistry needs. Check out the channel. We also got physics and math videos on the channel at the moment. So maybe we can help you there. Thanks so much. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Keep studying hard. I believe in you guys and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Okay. Bye-bye.